activate one of the treasures and um, let's just exact lethal on turn four. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> GG! Hello YouTube, our welcome is Fine Day, and today we are going to have a look at Ognis the Dragon Slash in Historic Brawl. This the game is to win by playing the commander and a bunch of haste creature, creating a ton of treasures and then having various synergies with it. So, Ognis the Dragon Slash has, is a 4 mana 3-3 with haste and whenever a creature you control with haste attacks, create a tapped treasure token. So you create a treasure token for each creature you attack with. So, for example, you have Ginger Brutes, you have Earthshaker Cranras, just all the, like, good haste creatures. You set up your board, you attack, and, um, yeah, you just create treasures. So, um, there are various ways you can take with this deck. I... Like, you can just go full affinity, you can just go full haste tribal. I tried to do a middle ground where I have the strongest cards that synergize with the artifacts in the deck, and then also just try to have a solid um, game plan um, around it. So, uh, what am I talking about here? First, first and foremost, we obviously have a bunch of interaction, right? Uh, but we don't have that much, honestly. Um, because we have a ton of, like, hasters, but there are not actually that many on Arena. Um, so, uh, I, had I had to stretch a little bit, basically. Um, we also have something like Magda Brazen Outlaw, which can be extremely scary in the deck, because you can attack, create five tap treasures, you can sacrifice those tap treasures, and immediately get an Amber Cleave onto the field, which is uh, pretty, pretty scary, not gonna lie. Um, you can also just grab a hate great hand as a value engine onto the field um, And that's honestly it. It, it like you either grab a great hand or amber cleave or magda really Well, you can also just grab a, a gold spin or a glory bringer if you need to like swing in in the air So um, at three again more haste more haste um, We have additional synergy with things like Zorn where we get more treasures we have also nettle cyst, which grows per treasure we have effectively. And then we have some really cool tech with salivating gremlins. So if you attack, um, you create multiple treasures and for each of those treasures that you create, salivating gremlins gets plus two, plus O oh, and trample under an after. So at the very least, if you play this on three and Ognis on four, this is a four, three trampler for three, which is okay. But if you only have one more haster on the field, this is a six, three trampler. And you know, this can get out of hand real quickly if you have like zones to create more treasures, if you have parallel lives to create more treasures. And overall, there's uh, just a lot of cool things you can do. Um, you might ask yourself why we have a finale of devastation in this deck. And honestly, this had multiple reasons. First and foremost, in the treasures allow us to store a bunch of mana. And you know, sometimes we just cast it for 10 and kill the opponent. Easy as that. But there are also a few creatures that are just so good in this deck that you want to grab them. Again, Magda is a great target if you have 5 treasures. Um, you can also just obviously grab Zorn if you want to make more treasures. Mayhem Devil shoots down basically everything the opponent has. Um, and then, you know, Corvold as a value engine is just great. You sacrifice your treasures, you draw cards, refill your hand. Pretty good. And then the big one to actually just kill the opponent. And this is, you know, it's a card that is almost a staple in this deck of how good it is. Marriott Master. So, Fabricate 3. When this enters, you can either choose to put 3 counters on this card, or just create 3 1 1 artifacts. You're always going to choose putting counters on Marriott Master, because whenever an artifact you control is put into graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent loses life equal to Marionette's Master's power. So, with Fabricate 3, this is a 4 6. And now, for each treasure you sacrifice, the opponent loses 4 life. And that usually just instantly kills the opponent on the spot, right? So, um, yeah, there's some really, really cool things you can do in this deck. Um, let's hope we get to experience most of them. Hope you enjoy the games, and if you do, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel, and uh, let's do this. We are ready to play against Clothis, Clothis of Destiny. And, uh, let's see. Oh, yes. This doesn't do anything on turn one, sadly. Um... But we have the option of just creating a ton of treasures here. 
This is actually so interesting. Uh, I'm not sh uh, where were you last turn? One drop, huh? Anyways, um, so if I play the Zorn here to make two treasures off of Magda, um, that's yeah. Hmm. So Landry Storm creates a treasure on attack. Uh, right. Yeah. So Zorn and Magda are kind of the same in a way. Um, Facebreaker doesn't work here because I'm not going to deal damage to them, and that only creates a treasure on. Um, uh, if the creature actually connects, I'm going with the Landry Storm here. Um, yeah, because I can just kill the opponent next turn, hopefully. Because I just get to Zorn and crash in for a ton of damage here. Right? So let's see if this actually works the way I want it to. Okay. Do we just go with Ogness? By Zorn. How many treasures does that create? I think I'm just going with it. I don't want to count. Um, they tin street dodger as well. We swing in. We are activating Magda. We are sacrificing five treasures. Then we storm triggers five times. We are grabbing the ammo cleave, putting this on then we storm. We're holding full control here. So we can actually, you know, activate one of the treasures, and um, that's just exactly lethal on turn four. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> GG. We are ready to play against Nif Mizzet Parun, and um, yeah, bunch of nothing. Let's move this. A bit of something. Let's skip this. Reckless ringleader giving the celebrating gremlins haste here is going to be actually pretty re relevant. Yep. So, ringleader enters, gives something in my hand. Haste for the rest of the game. And, um. Can just go with. We swing in. And uh, we just play Magda for curve. Probably just counter it, that's fine. Draw disruption. Yep. Replicated ring. Replicating ring. Um. Yeah, just swing in. And if we draw a land here, then we can just swing in with Ogness. Um. Create three treasures, then this will be an eight or uh, three. Reservoir Kraken. Oh my god. This is actually quite annoying. Uh, decline. Don't tap you. Last turn. Yeah, Reservoir Kraken is a really cool card. Um,. Swirling Suns, okay. Kraken swings in. I just don't think we can do too much here. Yeah. That's unfortunate. But uh, the opponent gets to play Niv Mizzet as well. And. Uh, yeah, and we can just scoop it up. That's lethal for the opponent next turn. GG! We are ready to play against Ryu Storm's Edge. And, uh... Colors. This would be a decent keep if I had all my colors. But, uh... Sadly, do not. Okay. Let's see. 
Um, I probably want to mold this, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is decent. So with Ryu Storm's Edge, um, they could be a, um, Samurai deck, or they could also just be a Voltron deck. Okay, that's neither a Samurai or a Voltron card. Not sure what they're going to do here. <clears throat> Next turn I can... Oh yeah, Elite Spellbinder. They take either the Arncrop or the Metal Cyst, and I'm going to play the other one, I assume. <clears throat> Not sure what I would take here. I think I would have played the Arncrop Crasher. And then... Yeah. They were taking the Arncrop Crasher. They agree that they would have also played that. Oh, that, that's just beautiful. Yep, Galia. Not sure if I want to discard a Rampage of the class, but maybe I do want to discard an Analyst. Like, maybe my actual win condition is just working towards this Rampage of the class. <clears throat> Let's see. Opponent probably killed something here. But that's fine, I guess. Let's see. Commander faces Kakazan. I assume they just don't have a land drop, otherwise I think they would have played the commander. Or they just hold up removal for my commander, right? That's the most likely situation, honestly. We just... Are, are we just super greedy and just discard two lands? Like, how greedy can a single human being be, right? Um, or, like, I really want to discard at least this forest, right? And then I don't know if it's correct to discard something else as well. Um, what are we looking... I, I, I just don't think this finale is going to be that amazing. Oh, yeah. Braska, Golgari Queen. Seems like a decent magic card. Um, I think we want to swing in. The treasure token. Question is, do they block? They do. And now I'm just going to play Raska. Minus on the elite spellbinder and... Now... I... Really took off the pressure from the board. Pretty good. <clears throat> do they have a protection spell? Fight is one, wow. And that also just kills my Raska. Yeah, that was really good for them. Okay. Does this have first strike? Yes, it does. Awkward. <clears throat> Could have sacrificed something to draw a card. Not sure. Oh, they just surrender? Interesting. We are ready to play against Quasar, Augur of Agonies. Um, oh yes, perfectly playable hand, I love it. So... Hmm, very interesting. Yeah. Um, I think I will just lead on the Bowman Curry, getting the most amount of value possible from that. If I was on the draw, I would consider playing this Inquisition instead to um, block, well, block, uh, just discard their mana rocks. Uh, yeah. Leo. Yeah, there it is. We just discard their arcane signet. Beautiful. So we know they have a Wrath of God ready, right? So we are going to play around it by. Um, we're going to play around it by just fueling, like putting everything into this Bomet Courier and then cracking it in response to um, uh, the board wipe. So basically, whenever it attacks, we exile the top, and then we, for one mana, we can discard the hand, sacrifice it, 
and uh, put all the exiled cards into hand. So that should be pretty, pretty good. Cycle. Could just take this time now to brazen borrow the Bowman Courier, but then I can just crack it with the goose. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think we just go all in. Yep. Yeah. And we just keep this goose untapped. Yep. Yeah. Now, yeah, we they board wipe. We can discard our hand. Like we're not like I wouldn't overextend into board wipe if it wasn't for the bowman career because we discard everything in our hand anyways. This just really forces the board wipe. Um, let's see. They're just passing the turn. Yep, land, Wrath of God. We crack the Beaumont Korean response. Oh no, oh no. Oh man. Uh, yeah, um, this is awful. I messed up, and uh, now I could have had one more treasure instead of a food here, basically. So that would have allowed me to play Ogness, um, and the Brushfire Elemental. But no, I think I just gotta put Ogness into play. Oh man, I messed this up. Okay, that's fine. That would have been one more treasure, three more damage, just overall really important here. Um, let's just Phoenix of Ash this. Swing in. I assume they will brace and borrow the Ordness. Yup. And they, we know that they have a disdainful stroke. Um, so I think I want to just play this inspiring statuary here, right? But maybe it's yeah. I mean, I know I could have played this, tap the food, um, and then play the Phoenix of Ash, but I wasn't sure what they were going to do. Um, if I wanted to keep up bail for mastery or not, right? So, and I think it's fine. Okay, okay. Um, so Ognus, yep, um, yep, play you, they disdainful stroke it, and I think I'm fine if I just, painful mastery of the quasar, yep, um, the reason is I just don't want them to have Quays on the field uh, because they could just very well have lethal next turn. The way a Quasar deck wants to win, they have two cards that they're finding to try in the deck. Like, e it's either or, and they just drop that and it's instantly lethal with Quays on the field. Um, yeah, this just reduces our commander cost by so much. It's beautiful. Um, let's see. We we'll just go for a rush fire elemental. Um, can I just go for a cobalt? Honestly, <laughs> it doesn't seem like the worst idea. Um, but maybe we're just supposed to rush fire elemental, phoenix activate phoenix. Just get that uh, in for the most amount of damage here. I would have loved to have a land drop here, but um, that's fine. Raisin Borrower, sure. Seems that that blocks the Phoenix. Yep, that's fine by me. And then I can use my mana here to uh, play a Nettle Cyst. That's pretty good. And now I effectively ramp as well because now I can always just ne tap the Nettle Cyst to the Inspiring Statuary. Okay, um, we are just going to do this for five. Um, yep, library, because I really want to kill the Quasar, so I'm going to use the Glory Bringer to do exactly that. So attack, and then set this to exert, so you have this little arrow here, and when you exert it, you deal 4 damage to target non-dragon creature. And now it doesn't untap in the next untap step, but that is fine, because, you know, 
We hopefully just kill the opponent if they replay Quasar here. Opt. Yep. Yeah, and that's why we have the glory bearer just as an out to like kill things if you need it. Yeah, that would just line up pretty pretty well. They're digging for a board wipe here. Um, a board wipe actually doesn't save them because they have a so an awakening, but they don't know that. Also, I just have a phoenix of ash that I can get back. GG. We are ready to play against Grease Fang, Okiba Warboss. Oh yes. Oh yes! Oh yes! Okay, I love this. Um, anyways, um, I'm not sh sure how many people, um, I'm going to ask this in the comments as well because I know very well that only like 15% of people just make it this far into the video. But I'm wondering if I should go more in depth what the opponent's commanders are actually doing. Right? Because I personally know what everything does, um, but I just assume that I'm in the minority here. So, Grease Fang of Keeper Warboss wants to drop uh, vehicles into the graveyard and then just reanimate them with Grease Fang, which is a pretty, pretty cool game plan if you ask me. So, here's the big question Do I play a Kalein or a Magda? And I think I want to just start generating treasures first before I get the payoff for having treasures. Um, so yeah, Magda creates treasures on the attack end. Kalein allows us to grow our creatures from using these treasures. And, um, yeah. Let's see. I assume they just kill the Magda. Oh, they just feel of ruin. It's fine. They're fixing their own mana doing this. They're not like, yeah. Um, I think I just need a green, right? I have double red, triple red, double black. Yeah, just a green. And yeah, they only have black, and they can also get something here. So they have the white, and then they vanish inverse. Yeah, classic. Um, now the question becomes whether or not I want to play the Fable. I want to play the Chandra. Um, Chandra is just way more treasures. Uh, next turn, when I drop openness. So I do like that a lot. Put something in the yard? No, just the command tower. Just double checking. <clears throat> because Chandra with the minus two can bring back it's no sorcery, so it's mana value three or less. Uh, they don't have a vehicle in the yard right now. So that's pretty good for me. Oh, okay. They're learning. That means they can discard draw. But no vehicle, still, which is great. Okay, I assume they want to kill the Chandra here, or if they have instant beat removal, they probably want to save it for Ognis, honestly. What's pretty cool is that the uh, creatures from Sokken, uh, Sokken Crucible of Defiance actually have haste. They're not discarding, interesting. What the... Does that mean that they have more removal in hand? Uh, anyways, we're just creating a bunch of treasures. And the strong good, uh, the strong thing about Ognus is, if we, if Ognus now gets removed, we just play another land and you know just play Ognus again and make more and more and more treasures. Uh, it's just amazing. And they just surrender. <laughs> GG. We are ready to play against. Nicobolas. The Ravager. Yeah, it is the Ravager. Oh man. Um this with red would be a keep, right? Like we can't just turn three Ognus. That'd be a four four and uh but... also missing colors. Yeah. This is fine. Um Don't think we need Damba Cliff in the sand and I from the games I've played so far, it feels like I want to hit my land drops. But maybe it's just correct to be one of these. And probably the swamps, since I want the double red for Ammo Cleave. Very interesting. The punt goes first, so I get to see one more card. <clears throat> and we're going to play the tap land on one. Not playing the 10th Street Dodger. 
the reason being here that um, I can now double spell with Inquisition and Tensory Dodger, which I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. So let's just Inquisition first. Um, yeah, I'm going to take the instant speed removal out of their hand right now. I would love to have something to do on turn 3. Like just anything, really. <laughs> just give me anything. Um, they have a rich offsuit. Kind of annoying, honestly. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I want to play this because I assume I just want to crack it to ever so slightly reduce my chances of growing lands. I think I just want to have more black. I want to have double black, I have double red, I have double green. I probably just want triple red. Um, let's see. Opponent is thinking. Um, just quick check over my deck. It does, yeah, it doesn't really matter what I, what I'm getting here. So, yep, my turn. Um, I think I'm going to attack. And then before I can give them a target, or well, before they get priority from this e e to extinction, I'm actually just going to minus this Karn. Because if they just kill this Karn now with e to extinction, yeah, also. And now I can swing it with Ognis, um, and I get to, like, this gets to be a 2-2 immediately, basically. Red. Oh, they were missing red. I'm still not sure. Maybe they should have either extinction the Karn yeah, instead. Hmm. Very interesting. Just make another construct. Play a bit to the board here. Swing with owners. And I assume we just play the Gilded Goose. Yeah, and honestly, the, the Karn struct is going to be a very respectable creature very soon um because Ambercleave is four then five from the ogness attack i guess yeah this is a six six double striker um if they don't do anything here because they just play the commander or a loth right i'm would love this we obviously start our turn by looking what we can draw here um, so like, we just plus because I'm not going to sacrifice this card for nothing. Um, but I, like if they just play Loth or Nicobolas, I, oh, I think they can play Loth and then sacrifice a creature or discard. Oh, that's, that's totally cool by me. Um, we don't get to Ember Cleave here, well we can. The question is if it's worth it, honestly. Oh, very interesting, very interesting. Mm. Also, I'm now happy that I have the triple red here, in case I want to do Gremlins plus Embercleave, by the way. <clears throat> the question is, do they discard something to Bone Shards as well? Yep, they decided not to. Okay. Command tower over the soft seas. Yeah, I assume they give us the command tower here. <laughs> um, oh, they give us the thought seas. I love it. Um, yeah, just give me that hand. Time warp. I don't care about the time warp. I care about them having tempo with the bone shards and removal. So I do this. I swing with both. So the Amber Cleave gets reduced, and that hits them for 10. Yep. And, um, yeah, now they don't have removal. Um, they have to rip something off the top. They have two chances, because at the very least they can just time more, probably basically nothing, get another redraw. Um, 
But as this stands, it's it's pretty threatening actually. Um Yep. I mean we just showed them that we also missed a land drop by doing this kind of play. Um like there is some reason to just not play land against Nicobolus Ravager or like any commander that has an ETB discard effect because then you can just discard your lands to that commander at a certain point but um, I think just playing the land here was correct anyways because I, the, the celebrating gremlins don't have haste they, the real strength of these is playing them before Ogness but um, uh, it's not that great later on unless we give it haste we have Two ways, I think, in this deck to give something haste. <clears throat> Time up, yep, as expected. And the last thing they can do is play Loth and uh, plus to draw a card. But they messed up. They should have tapped the beacon and just I leave up Black Mana. Wait, oh, did they get a counter spell? Um, I think I want to start by plusing here. Oh wow, this is just not a great choice for the opponent, not gonna lie. Um I think I just wanna go for a Yeah, they they just concede to that. GG. We are done with the games. Hope you enjoyed them as much as I did, and Ogness the Dragon Slash is certainly a very um, fair and fun uh, junt aggro mid-range commander. Um, the deck plays out really nicely. Sometimes you can just absolutely high roll the opponent and just straight up kill them on turn four as we've seen. Um, which is pretty pretty disgusting and um, I mean the deck still has some issues. So first and foremost we are in three colors so that means our fixing isn't the greatest. Uh, so currently we have four cycles um, for example, we have Pathways, we have Shocklands, we have the Checklands, and we have the Slowlands. Um, and then in our uh, uh, enemy colors, I think, yeah, this is enemy colors. Um, we also have the Marches, and we have the Snarls. But apart from that, the fixing is not too great. And you go from wanting red, black, and green on turn one to like... Uh, uh, black, red, and like you want all sorts of color combinations very early and hopefully untapped. So I'm going to mold a bunch of hands just based on you know not having the correct colors, um, which I think it's fine right now. But you know we want one or two more uh, cycles at least complete the um, enemy cycles that we currently have to the allies, uh, allied ones. Um, that being said, we also have the okay, kind of issue that we just don't have that many hasters, especially in the two mana slot. We're just missing good hasters uh, on arena, I believe. Um, so that is kind of an issue for the deck because we want to play on curve and then, you know, just kill them. Um, although uh, there are some like, you can play riot cards, but like they're just... Like, they're two mana, two to hasters on, on two if you just haste them in, and it's just... It, it kind of doesn't work, really, uh, with Ogness. Um, anyways, uh, if you want to play this deck on a budget, what can you cut? What do you need? And just saying, this is an expensive one today. <laughs> like, if you want to play creatures on MTGA, it's going to cost you a lot, right? So, first and foremost, as I've talked about, you want the lands. Um, Anything that fixes mana specifically, you don't really care about utilities of so Sages, so kinds on whatever those are, you don't need them. Um, mana fixing, yes, you do need it. Um, and then, like, look at this. Uh, basically, the whole deck is rare or mythic. Um, the the core at one mana. I'm sure, you there are some hasters that I haven't included. There are more one mana hasters, um, but I felt like I had enough of those already. Um, and I wanted to go more top end heavy. If you want to play this on a budget, you have to make really serious cuts. Uh, because honestly, like, Bowman Curry is amazing, but you know, you can just play a one mana haster instead, right? A uh, good goose is amazing, but you know, you can just play one mana haster instead. Um, Shaper Sanctuary drawing you cards is pretty good in control matchups. You don't need to craft like specific finishers like Rampage of the Clans, right? That you just don't need that. You don't necessarily need parallel lives, but. 
the deck really functions if you multiply it, right? Like this is a deck that basically multiplies this power with certain cards, right? Like you have a Magda, now you have a payer for your treasures. You have a Zorn, and then you just create more and more treasures, right? You have a Lannery Storm, and then whenever you sack a treasure, it gets bigger and bigger. So you want basically everything that directly interacts with your treasures um, as a payoff. Like Zorn is not a payoff, it just amplifies your treasures, but uh, something like a stature is honestly pretty amazing in the deck because it just turns all your treasures into mana rocks, right? Professional face breaker, you can sack your treasures and now you just get so much card advantage, right? Marionette master, just straight up kill them. So those are the kinds of cards you're looking for and you really need to have enough hasters. So if you find yourself not having enough hasters, yeah, you will have to probably craft an Earthshaker current, it's not a pretty craft. Um, for all intents and purposes, but it's maybe you just have it to play two mana, two two vanilla haste creature instead. Um, but again, this has late game power, so um, that's that's pretty good. Um, yeah, also, you know, Karn Son of Urza kind of directly interacts with your treasures. Nettlesis just grows huge, as you've seen. You like the the Karn token was just a measly one one and then just crashed in for a five and suddenly, and it's it's pretty great. Yeah, overall. You want a bit of everything, you want to trim down a bit of everything, right? It, like, you don't need this much top end, but honestly, you want some of this top end. Um, you... If you play Magda, you definitely want Great Tench, Embercleave, and probably a Glorybringer, because that's like the three things you're getting, as you've seen in the games. And, um... Yeah, it's, it's a bit... Cut a bit of everything. Um, there's not too many things you can go wrong with. But at the end of the day, you will just um, see a drop in power in this deck if you cut too many synergistic cards. Um, anyways, uh, this is it for the deck. Hope you enjoyed Ognis, the Dragon Slash, in Historic Brawl, and I will see you in the next video.